Good afternoon, this is Schweitzer, and it looks like this might be one of our final videos on just some practice problems on gases. So we'll range from hopefully start to finish on some general problems. You should, of course, be pausing these videos and searching out your own answers and seeing how you do. Uh, okay, so typical room temperature is about 23 degrees. What is it in Kelvin? So keep in mind, uh, Celsius uh, plus 273 plus 273 equals Kelvin. So that means 23 is 296. That would be my answer. Again, not a tough question here, but not one that would be just a tool we use all the time, right? So make sure you got that kind of an idea. Weatherman gives you a pressure of 30 inches of mercury. If you watch the weather, that's pretty normal pressure on Earth. What is the millimeters of mercury and what's the ATM? So when you measure that pressure, it's literally on Earth. It's the weight of air above you equivalent to what would be the equivalent weight in, in this case, inches of mercury. So if you had a teeter-totter, you put all the weight of the atmosphere on one side and you put a little column of mercury on the other Mercury is very much more dense. Mercury is 13.1 times as grams per liter, milliliter. So that's water is only one gram per milliliter. So that's 13 times more dense than water. So you might be able to pick up a gallon jug, you know, of, uh, of milk or water. But good luck picking up a gallon of mercury. It's going to be really heavy. Um, well, you still could probably do it, but my, the jug might not handle it. All right, so let's do this quickly here. So I'm going to show the work for this guy. 30 inches, and then um, I need to get the inches into millimeters. So get rid of inches, go to centimeters, get rid of centimeters, and go to um, uh, millimeters. And this is 1 inch equals 2.54. You could look that up, or you could do a search and just go from inches right to millimeters, uh, 1 to 10. And this is going to be my equivalent in millimeters of mercury. 30 uh, times 2.54 times 10 equals 762. So 762 millimeters of Hg. All right, convert that over to atmospheres, 762 millimeters of Hg. Get rid of millimeters of Hg and go to atmospheres. Uh, one atmosphere is 760, so we have just more than one. It's divided by 760, it's basically one. It would be 1.00, in fact. All right, atmospheres. Um, next one, okay. A one liter rigid gas cylinder with a pressure of one atmosphere has a temperature increase from 298 to 398. It's new pressure. Okay, so in this case, um, P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. Now, since I have not um, dealt with any moles, then Pivner really isn't going to be usable for me. So I'm looking for the new pressure P2. I'm in a rigid container, so the volume is constant. So volume drops out, and I'm solving for P2. So P1, move this up, P uh, T2 over T1 equals, pressure is 1, times T2, which is 200, uh, 398, uh, 298. So a decent jump, about a third. Uh, and you're just going to basically be multiplying your original pressure by the fraction of your increase. So 1 times 398 divided by 298 equals 1.33. So 1.33 uh, atmospheres. Okay, about a third more. That's pretty close. Um, okay, so what temperature of Celsius of, the, uh, of an air sample has a pressure of this and the mass of this and a volume of this. So PV equals NRT. And I want to use this one because I have a, a mass here. Um, and I'm going to solve for temperature. So PV over NR equals T. Okay, so 
This is means that we have a container with a certain amount of stuff that's in it. And if I put this amount of stuff in here and this, you know, and I want this pressure, what does the temperature have to be? So the pressure is 1.5, the volume is 1.1 liters, N is, well, I don't know my N, let's go ahead and tug this out, 0.4 grams, grams to moles, one mole is 4 grams, so this is 0 0.1 moles, that's a tenth of a mole. Okay, so 0.1 and R, because I'm using atmospheres, I'm going to use 0 0.0821. Let's solve out for our temperature. And our temperature is going to be in Kelvin, but they want in Celsius. 1.5 times 1.1 divided by 0.1 divided by 0.0821 equals 200. 200.1, so 0.97. So 200.9 is what that. Okay. Um, three sig figs would be 201, but uh, degrees uh, Kelvin. So Celsius plus 273 equals Kelvin. So if Kelvin is 201, then I got to subtract off the 273. I'm going to be negative. That's okay. So 201 minus 273 is about negative 72 degrees Celsius. All right, no problems. Interesting problem. All right, next one. A 2.5 liter rigid container is mixed with 10 grams of helium and 10 grams of oxygen. What's the partial pressure of the helium? All right. So in this situation, um, 10, let's get the moles first. I'm going to do a Pivner problem. PV equals NRT. I'm going to solve for P. So P equals NRT over V. And I just got to plug in the moles of helium. So 10 grams, grams to moles. One mole is 4 grams for helium. And then the periodic table. 10 divided by 4 equals 2.5. Okay, 2.5 moles. So... 2.5 moles times 0.0821 times temperature, which not giving a temperature here. Um, so we'll figure at 273 degrees Celsius. All right, and I'll add that in there hopefully here. Let's just go ahead and do this guy right here. Uh, 273 Celsius. Uh, let's just go Kelvin. All right, so get rid of that guy. All right, so plug that in there. 273 divided by the volume, 2.5 liters. All right, plug it in here. 2.5 times 0 0.0821 times 273 divided by 2.5 equals 22, pretty cool, well, saying 22.4 liters, okay, equals 20, well, 22.4 moles, atmospheres is what it's saying here, so this is my mole, so two moles, I'm in a pretty small volume here, okay, all right, sounds good, 22.4 atmospheres, and that's the partial pressure of the helium, partial pressure of the oxygen, same thing, Said I'm going to put in the moles of oxygen. So I have 10 grams. Here are the grams. I go to moles. One mole is equal to 32 grams, so about a third of a mole. 10 divided by 32 is 0 0.31. 0 0.312 moles. Okay, 0 0.312 times 0 0.0821 times 273 divided by 2.5 liters. And what do we get? This one should be less, I and mean, we have less moles. All right, we have less than one. So 0 0.312 times 0 0.0821 times 273 divided by 2.5 equals about 2.7, 2.79 atmospheres. That's the partial pressure 
partial pressure of the O2. What's a total pressure? Total pressure is 22.4 plus 2.79, and my total pressure is 25.25 25.1 atmospheres. The gas from a rigid the gas from, from the rigid container is compressed into a 1.25 liter container. The pressure of the container will be what? Okay, so now we're going from a 2.5 liter container to a 1.25. So I am cutting my pressure in half. You should be aware that this is a reciprocal relationship. Pressure of the container will be exactly double. So it's going to be about 50.2 atmospheres. Okay. Uh, and you can do the long way. P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. And the temperature is going to be main constant. And all we're doing is solving for these. So P1V1 over um, V2. And this is going to go a half here. So this gets cut in half. Um, it's half the volume, so it's twice the pressure. So V2 is, yeah, so this is 2, this is like 1. This is uh, 2.5, this is 1.25. So the fraction is 2, so it doubles your little pressure here. All right, um, the average kinetic energy uh, has remained the same because the temperature has not changed. The molecular velocity has been the same because the temperature has changed. In terms of kinetic molecular theory, why did the pressure increase? Because you have an increase in the number of collisions per area. Because you have less area. And you could do a little better job explaining that. Saying the particles are traveling at the same speed. There's less room, so they hit walls and other things more often. Alright, so which sample contains the largest number of atoms? Alright, so this is kind of a Pivner question. Uh, keep in mind that this is an ideal gas, so the number of particles, the identity of the particles, just does not matter. Therefore, these two are the same, and likely not the answer. Alright, so now, what's what we got here? And you can solve it out if you want, um, looking for N equals PV over RT. Okay. Keep in mind that this is 298, this is 273. And we're looking at fractions of increase. So, in this case, um, my temperature, the, the more my temperature goes up, the, the more this comes down. Um, the more my pressure goes up, the more this goes up. So this guy, this indications that my my number of particles is going down. This is indicating my particles is going up. So what fraction of this versus fractions of this? Two, 298, 273 is kind of close. Um, I'd say if I had to guess, I'd say that the temperature is a little closer than is the pressure. There's a larger disparity in pressure than there is in disparity in the temperatures. So I would think that this is going to cause a larger amount of particles than the, this guy. Well, let's try it out. So all we got to do here is plug them in. We'll do two different examples and see if I was correct. So pressure on this guy is 760 times the volume, 1 liter, and then the R, 62.4, and the temperature is going to be 298. And the other guy, one below it, is going to be 900 verse, uh, times 1 over 273. And then, uh, in this case, it is the temperature, which is going to be, did that, 62.4. Uh, so the question, again, is the 900 bigger, big enough versus the 760, or is the 273 small enough versus the 28? So let's solve it out and see. I kind of thought that this one would be the highest, but just an estimation problem. All right, so 900 uh, divided by 273 divided by 62.4. You know, I got about 
0.052 moles. All right, next guy, 760 divided by 62.4 divided by 298. Now again, you could simplify the math on this thing. Um, 0 0.04. Looks like I was right by a little bit, and they were not that far off. So the answer is D. And there's the explanation for that if you would like a ticket to stare at that a little bit. Okay. Um, either way. Sample question. All right, so take a moment. And, okay, so we're just vaporizing this thing. We get these little iodine molecules floating around. Keep them together. Uh, the mass is the same since the number of each type in the vessel uh, right there. There you go. Next one. Take a look. Okay. So just number of particles. You notice this reaction, you just cut them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Particles decreasing. All right. So we have three different questions here. Which one has the largest average speed? Okay. Which one has the smallest number of moles of gas? Which contains the sample greatest density? Okay. So speed-wise, well, temperature correlates to speed. So likely, I'm looking for the coldest one. Um, that probably is going to be that guy right there. The, well, the greatest speed. I want the highest temperature. Okay, so I want the highest temperature. So these two guys are both have the highest temperature, 50 and 50. But because the nitrogen is a little bit smaller than the oxygen, it's going to have a little higher molecular velocity because of less mass. So in that case, the N2, flask letter B. Which flask has the smallest number of, of moles of gas? Okay, now keep in mind, uh, N, P, V equals N, R, T. So N equals P, V over R, T. Um, okay, so pressure. So look for the smallest so I want low pressure, higher temperature. So let's do pressure first, because pressure, so low pressure, so smallest number. So that looks like that guy is 0.5. This guy is out. This guy is out. Keep in mind, if I double, this guy has double, then A is double B, and C is double A, so four times B. That guy is out. And this guy also is 0.5. So the same exact pressure. Okay. And now look at temperature. So higher temperatures mean lower number of particles. Because they're flying around more often, hitting off the walls more often. So you have less particles because have the same number of impact uh, pressure-wise. So higher temperature means lower. So I got uh, this guy. B is, once again, the answer. Which flask contains the greatest density? So this would be the smallest number of moles. So we want the greatest number of particles. Um, the greatest, and therefore greatest mass. So I think that the greatest number of particles probably is, is going to be flask C. Um, in this case, it's got way bigger than everybody else. It's got um, twice as much as everybody else. So this is going to be the most number of particles. You can convert that to grams if you'd like. And they all have the same volume. So you divide out. There you go. So um, even if you compare it to the next closest one, uh, a versus C. A has twice the particles that C has, and twice the particles that D has. And it's it's not even close proportional wise. C has to be the answer. And we'll stop there. Thank you very much.